previously on Plus One. There's no serious Warhammer YouTuber that seems to want to touch it. I'm also the three at one in six, we thought, who are the only minis not to share a code with anyone else in mind. Warhammer Duncan does in his assembly videos, which I'll put a link to, and he 28 mil heroic scale marines. And then, if you go on the site for the English instructions, the up arrow symbol, you may already recognize as the symbol for roll, you can put it aside. But when these were first released in 2017 in Japan, they didn't go straight for the new Primaris. And now, the conclusion. I've put together and finished painting up these blind box space marines. Eventually. When I got around to it. Ultramarines? Nope, uh, not on my watch. I've done them all as Crimson Fists. The original and the best. Here are the eight unique sculpts I got. If you remember from the previous episode, only the captain was missing. So we've got Sevastus here with his chain sword and plasma pistol. I thought it would make a bit more sense for the sergeant to keep hold of his equipment rather than running around the Imperium without all of his gear. So I took the optional helmeted head, cut the peg off the bottom and attached it to the side of his thigh. Caster, the generic trooper, doing a glamour shot with his bolter. This one's Gaian, the running man. Baniel lobbing a grenade. Uh, Garrus, who's just finished posing for dual wielding monthly. There's Promethor, who has the plasma gun. And also an artificial arm, as it turns out when I got around to painting him. Titus the lazy clip dropper. And last but not least, Remus the heavy gunner with his OP missile launcher. Who's definitely not just the sculpt from the Devastator squad. Mm. I should probably rename them all so they sound a bit more like Crimson Fist rather than Greco-Roman inspired Ultras. But... Never mind. You may have also noticed that these minis aren't exactly stock anymore. I've always hated putting on transfers, so I use these guys as a great excuse to try out some of those 3D printed squad markings you can get from Shapeways. I got some tactical arrow symbols, some of these Ordo Xenos type badges which fit in really well with Crimson Fists, and the iconic fist symbol for their left shoulder. The great thing about 3D printing is all of these pieces were already curved to fit perfectly onto the shoulder pads. The fist one doesn't quite sit as tightly on the shoulder as I thought they would, from certain angles at least. I did have to cut back a few of the tactical symbols with a hobby knife so they'd fit, like on the missile launcher guy where his arm's slightly covered. I also added a skull onto the sergeant's one, but that was about it. I gave them all a pretty simple paint job, mostly base coat with a wash over. I can always go back over and edge highlight the armour later, but I'm pretty happy with these. I put a matte sealer over them, and in a couple of places, like the lenses, I've gone over with a little bit of gloss to give the glass bits a bit more shine. The other thing I wanted to try out with these minis are these Pilot Super Fine Metallic Permanent Ink Pens. Yeah, I've got a gold one and a silver. You push the nib down a few times to get the ink flowing, and then just colour straight on. They work pretty well for the gold, especially for some of the Imperial Eagles on the bases, like this one. The coverage was instant and was super shiny. With normal gold paint, you usually have to undercoat with something like brown, and then do a couple of layers. This was one coat done. The thing is, well, it smells a bit odd, so I'm guessing it's a sort of alcohol based, and it went on no problem, but it didn't like it when I tried painting over it. The big flat areas on the bases were okay, the metal gratings only needed a couple of coats of black wash, but I also did most of the guns with the silver, and that's when it went a bit wrong. Any paint I put over it just beaded up and ran off. I must have put three or four coats over in some places, and that was primer and black, which both tend to wipe out paint pretty easily. They are much finer than a Sharpie, but also much more prone to sort of gouting out blobs of ink, so I had to keep using a tissue to absorb the first bit before then colouring over the model. You can't get the ink off once it's dried either without messing everything else up and it takes maybe two seconds to dry, so good luck mopping it up if you did put it over the wrong bit by accident. I managed to darken things up eventually. Washes did seem to work better than paint, because it could sort of pull and dry over the top of it. And the matte varnish did take off the brunt of most of the shine where I needed it to, but I lost a lot of depth and detail doing it. 
At least it only really messed up the weapons, and they all look consistent as a group. These pens did work out well for the missile shell and the end of the plasma gun, so it's not all bad. You may remember from the previous video that I unboxed a whole brick of 12. The other four were doubles of Garrus, Guy and Titus and Castor. Well, nobody likes clone troopers in 40k, so I kitbashed them with some leftovers I had lying around. This is Garrus 2, a beaky head swap with a combi flamer and a combat knife in the other hand. Uh, the left arm is completely new, and I've painted him up to be a sort of second sergeant so I can mix things up for kill team, or maybe make up two five-man tax squads from the 12 minis I have. As I'd taken off the bolt pistol, I went back in and glued some plastic offcuts into the empty holster to make it look like it was still holding something. Is that a stern guard head? Eh, probably. Titus 2 became my comms specialist. Um, the existing sculpts seem to fit perfectly for a marine looking down at his ore specs. And the clip on the floor easily got covered over with a socking rat skull. The standard backpack was also switched out too because you always need more aerials with your comms guy. If you plunk it right next to the original and look carefully, it's still obvious that they're the same sculpt. But on the tabletop from three feet away, you can always tell that this is the comms guy and this isn't. Guy and the running man got a ruined base from, I think, the assault marine kit? and a new helmet with a heads-up display. Oh, and a melter bomb, because um, it's part of his backstory? I don't know. I might have glued the ruin a bit too close to him, though, because from the side it looks more like he's just about to trip over than clamber over it. The last one is Caster the Second. He stands in as a veteran specialist for Kill Team. Uh, I've used another beaky head, but this one has the laurel wreath, which is for Marines that have been honoured for Valor and doing the dishes, and are uh, usually veterans or some sort of heroes. The first company of Crimson Fist is made up entirely of veterans, and they have both their fists painted red. So I did that, and there we go. Uh, I tilted the head differently from the regular caster too, so it looks more like he's looking in the same direction as his bolter. It's a subtle change, but if I just get caster one, you can see it easily helps separate the two out. I've also added a bit of cork and a few extra bits to the bases to vary them up a bit from the originals, and added a few extra purity seals here and there. These were a lot of fun to paint. Um, advice on assembly, these are push fit kits with very high tolerances between the pegs and the holes. Even unpainted, I had to apply a lot of force to push some of them down fully, so that they would join together. You need to push them straight down too. I tried twisting a little bit to get Guy and Bonnie's foot, uh, but the peg just twisted around and snapped, so push it straight on and don't sort of try and worry it because it's just going to go wrong. Some of them could be assembled completely and then painted, but I had to paint Promethor, the Casters, the Garruses and Remus without their arms on so I could get at the chests and the heads more easily. If you do the same thing, I'd recommend thinning their pegs or widening the holes with a knife and then cutting down the length of the pegs too before trying to assemble them, otherwise you won't be able to push them together properly. Even if there's only a tiny amount of paint on either end or on the peg, or you try and apply glue to the hole, they'll fight you, and you'll either snap the peg off, or you'll get gaps, and then you'll be annoyed. Poor Guyan copped it again before I figured all that out. If I get the angle just right, you might be able to see his left arm isn't quite all the way in. You have to tilt it. Can you see? Mmm, just about. Right, that's your lot. All my Space Marine heroes assembled, converted and painted up as Crimson Fists for episode 13. I'm very grateful for all the support and comments you've been leaving. It's always really interesting to find out what everyone else gets up to with their hobby. Been on a bit of a mini binge lately. It is, after all, one of my three pillars of play on the old channel banner. Yep, that's the one. But it's back to D&D in the next episode, so get hyped for that. How do you handle duplicates in your miniature collection? Do you leave them be, or do you convert them? Have you ever tried using markers or pens to cheat on your favourite paintbrush? Let me know downstairs. Thanks for watching. Take a rummage in the description box for more content on this topic, and subscribe for more plus one wisdom. See you next time.